topics. Zachary, start us off. So our topic for today is how do we close the gap between academics and strength conditioning? So basically a practical setting. That's what we're going to, that's our first topic for the day. What are your thoughts? What are my thoughts? Well, for me, it's one of incentivizing people outside of, outside of, outside of the practical point of teachers, one, to gain practical experience in some form or fashion, or secondly, getting people, moving people that have a vast experience in the practical side of moving to academic, incentivizing them to want to move over to that side. So we, again, can readjust and evaluate and critically think about the academic needs of people within the health promotion sector, sector, exercise physiology, all these other different vast subsections of what performance is and how we try to move the programs forward so there's not this tremendous gap when people leave their bachelor's or graduate programs trying to figure out a coach and then you have this saturated market of free help for people that want to work for free because they're trying to gain applied or practical experience and basically they're trying to take how you talked about in your presentation yesterday for CVAPs, basically the NSCA Essentials book, which is about as useful as a fucking coffee coaster, and try to take that to train high level, high, high level athletes. <laughs> this, here's the thing, though, right? I agree with you, but I think if you look at how things are now versus 10 or 15 years ago, the there's still a vast amount of people offering to work for free. It's just typically they're a lot more qualified than they were 15 years ago. So to me, the whole working for free is more of a function of that kind of like supply and demand of labor and how much institutions can take advantage of people willing to work for free and get free money for themselves rather than the reason people work for free is because they lack certain skills because, you know, if, if you were to look like Chris Toombs, I spoke to Chris Toombs. He was working, I believe, 20 years ago as the Academy SNC for Leicester Tigers with just a bachelor's degree. And he was making more than the person in that position now makes without adjusting for inflation. Mm. So pe people are going to get paid jobs with the lowest level of qualification that the market allows them to get. Um, I think the the standards being raised just because of competition. That's the only thing I would disagree with you on. So, but you you mentioned gaps, right? There's a big gap between academic and applied setting in team sports. What are the specific areas that you feel it? So, at least going back to looking through my education and as my bachelor's and now trying to square up and finish my master's. Uh, I think there is an actual applied like on the floor coaching piece. Like how do we take all these different pieces of what we're learning in a book per se and take it into the on floor approach? How do we manage people? How do we critically think and problem solve? And even believe it or not, the simple fact of what the fuck is periodization. I know we can get down the rabbit hole of agile periodization and Maladin's book and all these other different concepts, which are awesome. I think they're correct. But at the same time, the reality is, is I don't think I ever had a conversation in any of my undergraduate classes where what does it look like to train a team sport athlete? What does it look like to train track? What is block periodization? What is whatever, whatever, so be it. Like what is what field development? What are the task constraints of sport? Things like that. These are conversations we never had. It was more of, okay, what is, <clears throat> what is a glycolytic process and breakdown of molecules or whatever? So, so on and so forth. Like, yes, those are all, all important. And at some point that's, there's a base level of knowledge, but how do you take you, how do you take this base level knowledge and then turn around and put it into into the perspective field that you're trying to go into and, that, and I think that's an applied piece and even you can't gain it from a coaching perspective on the floor experience you can at least start to have the conversation and the developmental developmental understanding of what it looks like or what goes into it or the thought process for at least you have a basis some basis of ideas of what you should be looking for when you get into that environment which I think there I think to me and I'm probably missing the mark on a little bit or missing a little bit here and there. But to me, I think that's the biggest mark, at least in the American education. So, I mean, one of the things I think is like, you know, like people have said, the safest time to ride an airplane is in history is today. 
because every crash that happened before, people pay like a serious price for that failure. And then that information gets, thanks for that shot of your nuts. The, the, um, that information gets incorporated into the system and it's like the, the bad gets weeded out, like bad individuals get weeded out, bad decision-making gets weeded out and like every crash is learned from. And there's a investigation, post-mortem stuff like that. And obviously the, the pilots have real skin in the game. To, to learn because if they don't, they're going to crash and die and kill everyone on board. And the more, the more distance you can put between uh, the people making the decisions or, or putting it into a system and then feeling the effects of it, the less skin in the game you have, the less incentive you have to learn and to remove people from uh, the system. So if you look at strength and conditioning or you know sports science in, in general there's a lot of people putting stuff out that it's they're putting it out it gets picked up by individuals in the in sporting organizations they try it out and if it doesn't work it's not the research that put the idea out that gets fired it's the person implementing it gets fired so there's not as strong a feedback loop to people in academic institutions be like hey this information is not valuable or it's wrong or it's shit or whatever because they're insulated you, you know the cost the cost of success is oh brilliant you you were right good job keep doing it and the cost of failure is write another paper so it's yeah, like exactly, it's yeah. like asymmetry yeah exactly i know nathan nathan Taub talks about it a ton when you refer to the skin in the game or the consequences yeah. of being held accountable for it and I think like, and even looking back to like one of my classes, I remember it was like my junior or senior had a like essentials of strength conditioning class where literally the NSCA book was like our course, what was our course like required reading. And just, the, I remember uh, we had like a lab and it was like teaching like exercises. And the fact that I had some guy who ran distance marathon, like he's a good dude, but don't get me wrong. The dude who taught the class was trying to teach me how to clean and jerk and snatch and clean. And this dude ran marathons and he like didn't yeah. even train. So just from like very simplistic, like barbaric way of understanding skin in the game. Like when you, if you don't do it on a daily basis, you don't have vast experience. You're not informed, like truly informed on the subject, things like that. How are you expected to teach and inform other people that are going into the profession, so to speak? So looking at that, that's kind of like my, my biggest thing is just from a very barbaric view of it. You know what I find funny as well is like, I'm not saying it's, it's bullshit. Strength is important, but have you noticed that every, oh, strength is a cure all, double body weight, back squat, blah, 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 all mm -hmm. comes from the TSU tree of research. Uh, it's just a coincidence that they all have research which confirms their supervisor's pet theory. And there's no shortage of people within the field that will say, no, it's bullshit. But if, if you were to conduct research under those supervisors to find out, well, actually it is bullshit and here's the reasons why. You've just basically signed your own death warrant within that PhD program. So it's like, I think that's another thing that you you just end up pushing the, the pet theory of the institution that you come from. Yeah, exactly. And even like, I remember, I don't think there's a lot of places like this, like my program, I, wor I worked through, there was a big like exercise physiology lab dedicated to like uh, open heart surgery rehabs and like, cardiac rehab and mainly like diabetes. Like we had a big uh, like research facility for like diabetes type one, type two, things like that. Exercise JJ, take a note, brother. <laughs> <laughs> there you go right. anyway anyway uh so like looking back on that like even then or like you start talking about that the double body with squat like i don't think anybody in my like undergrad education or anything like that talks about like strength curves or force velocity curves or strength is relative to specific zone things like that. all these like very like things that are very naturalist now that we talk about now to where like now like most of most of my exercise phys physiology classes we were talking about isokinetic testing and things like that to where my smartest teacher I had, like, don't get me wrong, I'm so close with her and she's awesome. She, now, exactly, you talk about your program, like, my one of my main teachers I had, she did a lot of, like, muscular dystrophy work and things like that, and research for NASA, basically, on the effects of, like, gravity, things like that, and muscular atrophy and things like that. 
But the reality is, I don't think I know anywhere in the country that like talks about like field development, true energy system development, field sports, things like that. Like, so it's just, it's just, it's just interesting. And then like, like I was telling earlier, like I read through, like I was reading through like a site, like a sports psychology discussion board for like my master's class this morning on, I was just working on it and just like reading some of these people's like kind of wishful, hopeful, hopeful thinking that like how like relatively like important sports psychology is and the upwards trends of it towards like sport and like, eh, like, I don't know, like, do I think there's a value in it? Absolutely. Absolutely. But the reality is like, y'all are so far removed from the like equation of what happens on day to day in sport. Like you guys have no idea that this like half the shit that you just read through for class is bullshit. JJ, have you graduated yet? <coughs> well, my masters. Or my... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no man, I've got. Um... How uh, how risky do you want to be shitting all over St. Mary's then? <laughs> <laughs> I'll do it. <laughs> yeah, I'll leave that to TK. TK can do that. He already did it when he was um, there as well. So, did so just like my undergrad, undergrad from. The, Medical science, like SNC point of view, was actually like it was more medical leaning because my because Arkansas State was like had a really big nursing nursing and PE program, so most people were they were trying to basically kind of kind of bat their way into going to a nursing degree, or they were trying to go into like physical therapy. Like only one other person other than myself wanted to be like an SNC coach, and then that was it. But none of the people I I had no one in my undergrad who ever coached before, ever worked in the sport. One of the personal trainer for a long time. I was a PE teacher for like a couple of years. I started teaching. And that was pretty much it. So much, so much that's not, I mean, it was a waste. It was a waste of money. Like it was 100% a waste of my time. And everyone else was, and like, it was stupid. But like I learned, I learned purely up everything off like reading the FTS articles. And that kind of guided the what books I bought to like read on my own. And then the um, difference between, so like, between U.S. education and U.S. and like U.K. education, it's probably similar to what you see in the coaching side as well, is that like you get very much more like, like research-based and research-led and like quote-unquote like scientific-led in, in, in the education sector, but they lack, they'll lack a lot of like coaching your group, the practical side, the application, the application of, of information in a pragmatic way with the team. And so you like a lot of that I find like you know like in in the UK from the coaching side, but also just what you get in terms of uh on the education piece. Because like I mean I did my master's in, in physiology anyway, so like it's different. And we were and similar to what Zach was saying about cardiac with um at Marshall, like at St. Mary's big endurance school. Endurance and UKSTA. So like on the SNC um side, like in that master's course, it's just all UKSCA. Like, the, like, they have a clean and jerk and a snatch module. Like, are you fucking joking me? Like, <laughs> like I, it's, just, it's, it's just so fucking dumb. And then, like, on the, like so everything on the... So I, I would say I learned a lot of my physiology, uh, of course, because it was different. It was deep human physiology. And St. Mary's a big endurance, like, play that like Mo, Mo trains there. A lot of uh, cyclists and rowers, things like that, have come out of there or do, like, testing there. So because that, we had a big like endurance lab and like whole and like environment chamber things like and things of that nature. So like they would learn a ton in that sense, but only one of my lecturers had actually worked to, okay, that, to a program director. I worked for GB Rowan for a long time as a sports scientist and physiologist. And then um, another one of my lecturers who was my dissertation advisor worked for Australian special forces as a physiologist. But everyone else had never had just lectured and worked in labs and had this, and because of that, they taught a misconstrued idea of what the field is like. The people in my course, there's only 13 of us, like legitimately thought they were going to get a master's degree. And then one of them literally said, Oh, I'm going to get a sports scientist, I like a championship or a premier, uh, premiership uh, football club, a soccer team, like after I graduate. And like make like 45, 50k, and I literally laughed in his face. That was like, that's not how it works. And like you, and like he was, she was like, what do you mean? It's like I, I, was, I met the sports scientist at I think it was like Brentford or something like that. And he was like driving an Audi, and I was like, yeah, I was like, but he's probably been there for forever. He probably was unpaid for two years. Um, he probably knows somebody. Probably knew the head coach, or like knew the head sports scientist, or knew the head SNC. I was like, you don't get a degree and get a job. And literally some of them, one of them describes himself, I went back to London, as a failed PT. 
and was like playing low level rugby and a personal trainer because in his, cause he literally been sold this idea of like, Oh, you get your master's degree and then you get a job in SNC, but none of them were currently working at SNC. Most of them had never coached a day in their life. They had just been in uni the entire time. That was me. That was like, me in uh, 08. And so it was like, I remember being there just thinking like, all these lectures are full of shit. Like I had a lecturer who literally on our strength and power module said that I could make Usain Bolt run faster by doing strength training because he made more force into the ground. Then I laughed and it was like, I thought he was joking. And he was like, no, it's, it's funny. I was like, I was like, no, you couldn't. That's not, I'm like, it's not that simple. Like, if it was that simple, everyone would run a fucking nine four. Like, <laughs> like, I was like, hey, like, I was like, I'm like, what? Do you, I'm like, you don't know if you, him getting stronger, if him getting stronger, it's gonna actually make him slower because he's very tendon dollar, very elastic. Um, you don't know the core, like the core, like the negative effects of my attention from a coordination perspective. And now he's quote unquote producing more force when he's sprinting. Mm. And I was like, JB Marin's research shows that his experimentation with Christoph Metro shows that. That's, that's what I was like, literally just about to say is like, that's an example, like, you know, rather than looking at isolated qualities in average people that volunteered for research study and then extrapolate yeah. forward and saying, oh, you know, Usain Bolt needs to do this, this, and this. He would be an example. I, I, what I really like is actually looking at a successful individual, you know, a more successful individual yeah. in the field and trying to work backwards and say, you know, how is he doing it? Yeah. I was like, I David research. I was like, David Marin's research proves that, that just because he got stronger doesn't mean he's going to get faster. And like, my lecture, I never read those papers. And I was like, that's an issue. Like, you can't, like, you're telling, you're telling my ass classroom that like, strength is the key, you got to strength and power work. I can make, he also said I can make Mo Farah faster by getting him stronger. And I was like, whatever. Like, was, at that point, I, I was fully checked out. But you get, you get so much of that because it's the, I've heard some people see a lecture say it's like, if the problem is tenure, like, getting the idea of like, being the pressure to turn out papers then takes away their opportunity and their free time they wanted to to then coach or actually work in work in the field. But I just don't I just don't buy the idea that you should be allowed to be an SNC lecturer and have and like have never coached. That's say that even if you coach individual like small time level, that means fuck all to me. Like you need to have worked full time and like had your job and your money be bent on the fact that like I need to do a good job here. Or I need to like play the game a bit because like, obviously a skill is that game being played. So like it's just it's, you see something you just turn out paper after paper after paper. That's really like over at the guy Daniel Cadley because he calls it bullshit. And Daniel Cadley would be like, "Thank you for this paper. That means absolutely fuck all to the field." And you just, it's a clear example that you present that you made this paper to keep your job because you need to make a paper for your job's sake. Like it's just so. Well, here's stupid. the thing as well. Have you ever heard of a lecturer get fired because their research was terrible? Yeah, but it stands to reason that, you know, there should be a full spectrum of people that, you know, are doing awesome work, average work, and some people are doing terrible work, and they need to be culled from the herd, but it, it doesn't seem to be that way. And I think you need more of a balance of people on courses, because, like, um, someone said, like, oh, when I ever wants to be, like, an SNC coach, like, that's fine, but you can have a, a completely asymmetrical balance of power in terms of, like, your lecturing staff, where, like, 90% of them have never worked in the field day in their life and only maybe one or two of them have actually have and the rest of them like never done it. So it needs to be closer to 50-50. Mm. Like otherwise, otherwise you're wasting people's time and money and you're not giving an actual, not not just an in reality of what the field actually like. Because I think, I think people would get a lot of, so someone was like, yeah, I was a coach for a little while. I got fired um, or I got married, had, had a wife, a wife and kids or whatever. And they were like, I needed something more stable, so I chose to be a lecturer. But that'd probably be more eye-opening to most people than just like researchers spouting out idealistic views that doesn't that don't exist in reality. Hundred percent. Huh? No, I was just saying, I agree. I agree. I agree with TK on that. I mean, because even going back, looking like again, how he's kind of going through. Like, I didn't start out as exercise physiology. I was actually pre-med, and I switched. Uh, into the program because of like football and conflicts and you know I, I couldn't think for myself so I listened to coaches I ended up finishing with that like I ended up finishing with that you know what I read boy <laughs> yeah 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 exactly like yeah you know yeah, yeah you, you know anyway so like finishing with that and and a psychology degree because the, where the crest worked out left like to be honest I don't think like 90% of what I, I took or did in school like carry over anything I did it's like 
a professional workspace and then looking kind of like TK brought up. I think there's, I think you can break it down even further when you're talking about how we kind of joke, like how we like joke as a group and who is he coached. And I think it goes on beyond that. Even like coaching professionals and you look at like the sport in itself and you look at like applied education and, or just not even apply, yeah, really applied education. And you look at like, okay, like, has this person ran their own teams? Has this person period out, like created like an annual plan or created a periodization plan, whether it's field development, power development, whatever the hell. That's why be. I hired TK, because the answers to those questions when he was 21, 22. Yeah, I think that. Right. It wasn't at a high level, but the answers to those were yes. He hadn't even finished yeah. the degree. Yeah, and, 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 and like again, like even like looking at it, like whether it's like, again, there's going to be levels to it based on their ability, their age or experience things like that but I think you start the earlier you get involved in that because even like I remember when I started when I got hurt uh my last my final injury kind of put put the uh horse by old yellow behind the barn so to speak and I finally started coaching full-time uh my fifth year uh and I started I started coaching full-time and uh, at that point like I graduated and I'd already I'd already programmed for multiple teams things like that I'd been interning for multiple years while I was still playing and looking about that and then even like other places now as a full-time coach being an intern coordinator, I get, I get guys like emailing me like wanting like paid jobs or GA jobs right after they grad. Well, I graduate in August. Like, do you guys have any GA spots? Like I'd love to interview. Like you have a done shit. <laughs> like, like, like congrats, like, like whatever, like, you know what I'm saying? So even, so again, going back to kind of what I was saying, like with TK, even like TK's are, I think there's, I think there's levels to it. I think the higher you go, especially like, in, Amer- in American sports, we have like all these sports and all like there's one head guy, multiple assistants underneath them, and like I think there needs to be more critical analysis of like who's a be- who's qualified for even these assistant positions. Where kind of can they actually help move the program forward instead of versus just like facilitating what's on the paper? I'm counting that as an internet drop, by the way. You owe uh, everyone a drink. Cool, that's fine by me. I've I've thought about how you like bridge bridge the gap and because obviously one thing that I've like thought about a lot is like the more practical the discipline the more practical the education has to be the more theoretical the discipline the, the more theoretical the the education has to be so you know could could you in theory be a legal clerk without you know working every single day in a law firm probably there would be like a little bit that you would need to learn but you know if there's a huge practical coaching piece to what you do. You you can't really in good conscience charge people 50 grand for over four years and never have them coach uh, on the floor. So I thought like one, it would be awesome to see, but if you had professional teams, so for example, like the EPL, they're training kids like at four years old and the vast majority are never going to make it. So it's actually fairly low stakes, but you know, putting in coaches as, as part of like a, almost like an apprenticeship program. You know, you're going to, you're going to be at school three, four hours a day. You're going to be coaching three, four hours a day. And you're going to be with those kids all the way through your degree, however long that is. And then it's it, it, because in a way, let's say you have 20 people on the course, you're going to pick your next level of strength coaches to ascend up. Uh, from those 20 so you're you're actually doing your own staff training your own staff selection but people are paying you for the privilege I think it'd be a pretty pretty interesting business model for someone that wanted to do it um but I just I know there are some universities that like that partner I know like, like Harper in the UK like they partner with like clubs and like Gloucester like that. And, yeah. yeah and then I know I think I think Loughborough will do it too I know at St. Mary's it was it was Fulham I don't know if that yeah. partnership still exists, but it was, well, it was just there while it existed while I was there, and it was like for your undergrads, like and it basically was like it wasn't that they were guaranteed yeah, an undergrad from St. Mary's was guaranteed a spot, but they had like priority of like first yeah. interviews was like. So they used to do that. So when I arrived at Wasps, they used to do that with Bath. Yeah. But here's here's the thing, they were just like the willing recipients of free labor. They weren't necessarily mm-hmm. driving the curriculum. Do you know oh, what I mean? Okay. So that's yeah. what I would like. I would like to see it like be like, right, the last set that you sent us, we're good at this, this, and this. They need to work on this, this, and this. Here's the tweets that yeah. we suggest that you make next year for the curriculum, stuff like that. Yeah. I know the person who was at Fulham, I was part of like that uh, partnership. 
I know he I think I know I know he was like that because he's in lecture he lectured at St. Mary's originally. Oh, was okay. lecture, which, yeah, I was working yeah. at um at full time. I, I know he would like express his issues and concerns with like certain students and practitioners. At one point he actually hired the same one he had the year before because she was like, yeah, no one else was good enough. And it's just like, that's just the way it is. <laughs> like, and he, he always expressed, he always told like people apparently about like, the SNC undergrad department, the issues they were having. Like, I mean, so I think there's so some universities definitely trying it, but like you said, there's not enough of that like communication of this is where they lack, how do you improve it? You know, we, we, we'll even offer, like we'll offer our help, obviously for a fee, not doing it for free, but like we'll offer our help to even help you drive the program, make it better. Because in the end of the day, it's all just like just trying to produce better, like better coaches. Yeah. Better practitioners. Less, le- less, less coaches who kill kids. So you know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, bro, you're in the middle of it. What oh do you my think? gosh. And even kind of like TK, when you guys brought up kind of like some of the schools in the UK and do that, I think I think that's interesting to bring up because you look at the vast majority of programs on the American side of it is because of the monetary value and things like that, like based on assumed to, assumed to be had in athletic departments and things like that, there's a massive disconnect, I would say, for the most part between athletic departments, aka support staff or strength conditioning, whatever, so be it, and the academic side of it. So even, and I think that's another easy bridge, bridge to kind of bridge to kind of close the gap is the looking at intermingling more between academics and the practical side of coaching because that's another area I would say majority of schools don't have where it's starting a conversation with coaches where coaches here like in America like as I would say just kind of like overall looking at it kind of shun away from academics is all they don't know what to talk about they don't have any skin in the game so to speak whatever even though it's a little bit more crude and Neanderthal view of how they look at it because they don't look at it that way for the most part but academics also just oh well those are a bunch of fucking meatheads specifically right, looks at, like right? football. There's there's one there's one program in the U.S. I was thinking about going to if I didn't go like get over to the U.K. or get into like any of the master's program. It was Cal State Fullerton because of Dr. Andy Galpin because I know for I know he lectured mm-hmm. obviously professor been there for forever but yeah. also like, has been coach, coach coaching coach Wayne Lewis, coach, yeah coach UFC coach UFC fighters fucking. Coaches Trevor Bauer, like he has someone, and he's like the only person that I know of on the academic side in the U.S. that that's pushing it. That's not a double body weight squat person. <laughs> so here's his one. I was talking to Eric about this. Who, who to your mind has the best speed program in college football? Ole Miss. No, no, just like honestly, pick 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 a name. Uh, who do you think that? You can't pick yourself. I don't know much about football. Um, I, just, I, just, I just say Alabama because I don't know much about football. Oh, oh maybe, maybe uh, what's the guy? Is that Auburn? Is it Russell? Yeah, well, he's in Missouri now. I would say uh, I would say Ron Russell because his personality is one of the most underrated coaches in the collegiate football. It's probably one of the most well thought out, well to get, well put together, like field development programs when you look at the yeah. needs of driving max output and also the constraints of sport. I'd say he's up there. Uh, Kurt Hester's obviously is who he is, but I think because he is who he is, it's under it's underlooked and undervalued how much of a good of a job he does with skill acquisition, yeah. technical so, acquisition right. with the field. Here's the point: it's not SMU. Where is the best locomotion lab in the world? <laughs> SMU. So that should tell you, like, there isn't that cross pollination. With because honestly, like. You could probably outsource pretty much, you know, with a, with a, a little bit of a tweak. You could pretty much outsource like all of your speed training to the best sprint researcher in the world, and get their input in recruitment and gate analysis and all this kind of stuff. I'd, I'd yeah. give a dollar if that happened. Yeah, hundred percent. And I and I know the I know the guy that works at SMU is does a good job on uh, Kazkazadi. I know he has a lot of like he has a lot of experience field. I, I know he like doesn't do a good job, but just overall looking through the years of all the training coaches that have been through there, because there's been a lot of turnover at SMU, Olympic and just football. Uh, I don't think I've ever looking back at have looked at it, any of the coaches that have come through there have, have been known for their skill or field development in terms of their programming. And knowing how long the SMU Moker Load Moker Load of Lab has been there. Yeah, long time. JJ, brother. You're in the middle of this. So, I mean, like, I started, I guess, differently. Because I started with a sports coaching degree for like, the Did first you? two years. That. Yeah. 
and then I transitioned in strength co- into a strength conditioning degree. You don't like and weirdly your, uh, for the <laughs> for the sports coaching degree, all my lecturers bar one were currently coaching, um, and then the one that wasn't was the module on strength and conditioning, and he was the researcher, <laughs> and then. <laughs> You had to do that's, that's so much. Wow. Yeah, I know, and then you had to do accumulate eighty hours <laughs> of coaching over the course of your year, um, yeah. and it had to be signed off by your, you know, where you're on placement. You had to review every session and show evidence of that, and that was for sports coaching. And then I transitioned to a sort of conditioning degree for my for my last year, and. It was, it's like his, it was like his here power, the stats, here's the, here's his the stats Olympics, course you gotta do. His stats. <laughs> no coaching. <laughs> no, I think that was that's unfair. There was one assessment and it was the UKCA model. Here's one athlete. What would you do? It's like, well, it's one athlete. This is not challenging in the slightest. Um, and then I think the most I'm doing now, obviously, is distance learning. So. There's As in no great distance from reality. <laughs> I mean, yes, I <laughs> I'm gonna tread eggshells here, but I can just edit it anyway, so it doesn't matter. But oh, yeah, gonna watch. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know if you're your, your mates, are you? Um I would be if you unblocked me. <laughs> oh, it's just there's no I think my modules they've all this yeah, strength and power stats. Mm. I think maybe have one on transfer of training. The yeah. skill act was like a couple of lectures. It's like, well, to me, the skill act is more important than the strength and power component. Like, how many strength coaches do you know that aren't educated on strength and power? Mm. Um, uh, yeah, I think that number is lower than most people would say. But <laughs> well, uh, if if you ask them to re- rank their confidence. Okay, that's a diff- that's a different conversation, a different yeah. question, but yes. Then where would you put Skillac with that? Oh, at the bottom. Yeah. So I, I mean would, that, I that would... to me like ten years ago when I um no, eleven years ago when I, I interviewed to intern for Tappers. He and he's like, Right, you're gonna you're gonna do uh two hours in the gym with these players, I'm gonna evaluate you for the program and it's like, Yeah, cool. And he's like, Right, you're gonna go outside and now do a speed session with the uh, the under eighteen squad. And I shit myself because <laughs> so I was like, fuck, I'm not good at that. <laughs> but it was like, that was the stuff that I paid attention to in the year that I, I interned for him. And then, bro, I broke the bank to go to Athletes Performance, as it was then, Exos, specifically because they had a reputation for on-field stuff. And I was like, right, that's that's not going to be a weakness of mine. And I just kept working it and working it. And I'm less shit now, but... I, I sent TK a link the other day. There was a guy, I forget his name, but he, he has a podcast and uh, he's made a bunch of money in Bitcoin or whatever, but he's plowed a lot of it into a startup, which is basically, I forget the name. Anthony, of it. Anthony Pompliano. Um, yeah, this, his podcast. Like the Pomp- Swiss, the yeah. Swiss school or something like that. But it's basically this, it, I, I want to say Google have done something similar, but it's like basically, right, yeah. fuck a degree. How, how do you make somebody workforce ready in six months? And honestly, if I'm going to get crucified for saying this, it's arrogant, but like, I think I, in six months, or any of us can produce a coach that is going to be more productive in the workforce than a four-year degree, as, as, as things stand. Which is a worrying thought. Hmm. I mean, as, depending on what the base is, I'd, I, I'd, I'd probably say six months, depending on what the base is. Yeah. Define, define, co- I mean, define competent, though. I mean, yeah. it was. Can, can you just and walk out the room and come back an hour later and they haven't, you know? <laughs> ab- ab- absolutely. I mean, yeah. and, and, that's, and that's what an internship should be. I mean, put it this way like, if you were, I would say, the, between the four of us, if you give the four of us, uh, let's let's just say a senior in college, and it's their six months or six months. What they could be fucking whatever, like business, whatever, accounting, whatever. You give them a full fledged, true internship program for six months. I would feel confident in my ability if I am I I'm able to oversee their entire education, placing them as a graduate assistant into an actual coaching graduate. Yeah, it's assistant like a, position. Yeah, forty hours a week, like 
Yeah, like yeah, and they, they were full. They were they were fully they were fully committed to hey, I'm going to graduate, be placed, and it's on you to get me there. Yeah. I would I would I would I would feel comfortable with the four of our abilities to do that. Yeah, well, I, 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 no, I, like I said, there's there's always them being bought into. There's always that fact. Like, I was some like Griff made your point about. He's like sometimes you put all the you can set up set up organization education as best you can. But some people. They're just, they're just lazy. <laughs> yeah. Well, that and that's that's. But, the, almost, that's but the, I, I guess you can also make things though to weed those people out early. Yeah. Like, you're not wasting your time and their time. Bro, right, here's the thing though. If you take the cost of a degree over however many years it is, and instead you took that money and then flew to Cuba and glued yourself to Carlo Bozzicelli's hip for a year. Or you did the same with Altis, you know, with Dan Paff when he was there or wherever. Coaches like that, if you spent that money, do you think you would be a better coach than if you spent three or four years getting a degree? 100%. Oh, that's the failing. The answer should be no. <laughs> that's the failing. The, 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 pro, the, pro, the problem is, though, is, is there's no uh, – one uh, not the problem, but one of the main problems is, is when you look at that, it's kind of, I think what I was trying to get to earlier, and again, I got, I got the attention span of a goldfish, but is the reality is, is like none of these academic like places or universities, or whatever, are creating these avenues or positions for people with those, with that type of level of coaching to transition to, to post coaching. Just like we talk about all, all the time, like how many people do you truly know in this profession that retire a strength coach? or step away into a regressed role, whether it's a lecturer or educator, how many, like most people like go to medical sales or fucking real estate or whatever, like they like That's more real estate. <laughs> yeah, whatever, <laughs> like, or they're like some cryptocurrency, like guidance counts or whatever the fuck it is, I don't know. But that being said, like, there's no avenue to where like when I'm 40 and you know what, fuck all, like I'm tired of working 80 hours a week. I got a wife and the kids, at least I hope so. Cause you know, I look like Benjamin Button. Um, if there's a place for me to kind of go back to work in the university and be able to kind of pass it down and give that applied practical experience. There's no, there's no avenue for that. Mm. I mean, this is the thing is like the fact that it takes three or four years, you're doing it on somebody else's timeline and you're not necessarily going to be ready to coach when you finish. That's why I would love, I'd love for there to be just, an accrediting body that says like, this is the standard. If you can pass, you're ready to coach. And it, for it to be independent from the universities and say, right, you know, here's, here's the criteria that you have to fulfill. Here's the, the amount of work that you have to do when you get it, you're a coach. Like I used to, I went to school with this, this Chinese kid called Will Diep. Uh, and because uh, he's just a lunatic or whatever. He was, he was driving around from the age of 12 on open roads in England. <laughs> And the day he turned 17, he passed his driving test because he'd been driving already for five years. But <laughs> Northampton. North <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, listen, if you, yeah. if you, listen, uh, you go off to Cuba for six months to a year and you're ready to coach, why should you have to wait another two and a half years for a university to say, oh, yeah, he's, he's good enough? This is the problem. I can go serve my country in godforsaken whatever land when I'm 18, but I can't buy cigarettes. I I can go get shot in the face, but I can't take shots to the face. There's something wrong with that. Yeah. Yeah, I think I would just... I want to see that separation where it's like... It's like the the NSCA now is making it... I want to say it's like 2023. I think it would be mandated where you have to have like kinesiology, exercise, science... You have to have a bachelor's Is that another case now? Because what, what, what degree? No, no, no. You know? just, just a bachelor's degree. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think they're going towards where you have to have, I think it's like 2023 or something like that. Well, like you have to I have thought, a, I thought I thought this one year. of those, like, fields. Now, I thought the CSCCA was like was moving to like some sort of model like that, where it was like some of you at least had to have like a bachelor's or master's in like some sort of like science-related degree or something Nobody like that. Not a body count. But, or yeah, you know, like whatever. Like I, I'm not going down that rabbit hole because you know whatever. Anyway, um, but even then, I think the biggest, bigger issue before even kind of getting into like these different governing bodies is strength, like athletic performance as a whole, DPT, whatever, strength coach, whatever. There needs to be similar to like a DPT or athletic trainer or physio, whatever it is 
is there in America, there's no governing body or like state legislator or board, or board testing or board licensing. Like there is some of these other me like medical profession, like uh, professional spots, like, Just yeah, like, this, like it was saying, like, I'm the, like, even like auto mechanics have, have more certifications than like I do, like, like true auto mechanics, not Mikey down the street, changing your tires, but like true, like true mechanics that have more certification requirements or state, like state licensing that we do. Yeah, but here's the thing, right? When when you do that and you just you're objectively saying, right, okay, here's here's the standard that you have to achieve. All four of us could go out and open a school to train mechanics, and then it just becomes about you know who's offering the most amount of quality to advance people towards that in the shortest space of time. Because if, if I if I pump out guys that you know I have a hundred percent pass rate and I get it done in three months and you get it done in six, that's good for the industry, right? No. Absolutely. But even, even then, like there's no, but even then, like when you start looking at it that way, like once you are deemed certified or mm. of, like able to like produce and do like be competent enough in the job, like there's no, there's no like checkup to make sure like one, you're progressing two you're maintaining three, like you're kind you're still competent, confident in your profession. Like, I know like my dad who works in the medical industry, like every, like through, I think it's like every three or four years, like, he's calling me on the phone, freaking the fuck out, excuse my language, because he's got, because he's got, like, state board, like, renewals, and he's got to, like, retake tests and all this other stuff, and, like, the, like, we may not be on the amount of body counts or, like, sheer, like, extreme nature of, like, control of other people's lives, but, I mean, some people have shown that we are, because they're, anyway, uh, but the reality is, is, like, one of, any one of us could walk into a room tomorrow and, like, kill a kid, like why why is there not a higher level of standard to make sure that we're taking care of like these athletes? So that's my big so is it, thing. Yeah, well, is the thing? Is it like is it because it's like a nascent profession or just because people aren't smart enough to figure it out? I think it's both. I th I think I think the first the first one is needed because of the second one, because there are people in the profession that are have been deemed certified that aren't capable. That they, well, I mean, that's just the, the big, the first mistake is having one of the major accrediting bodies where you're suddenly deemed to be a master because of longevity. Just, I mean, just like for the fact that I look back, I look back at like myself and other people and there's other people like they have the a deemed accrediting body certification by the time they graduate college. And I know people, I know people in the profession that are, have still don't have it. They've been coached for 20, 30 years or people that are in the paid full-time jobs and they can't even get approved, like deemed like competent enough to do their job. And yet they still have a job and they've taken it. They've failed the test three and four times and they've spent mm -hmm. more money. They spent as much, they've spent as much money on like taking the test and they have actual textbooks trying to learn. Like, so it's just what, what is, what is the proper way to go about it? And I don't know if I have a right answer to that, but something's going to give. Maybe eventually it'd be like, I mean, the profession as a whole is still quite young. It's what, 40 years old, maybe 50 years old now? Maybe like 20, 30 years down the line. God, I do not want to be coaching at that point. No boy, it's going to be the one clearing up, bro. Uh, there'll, probably be, there'll probably be something that, there'll, there'll probably be a, a eventual divide of like, I think potentially it could happen with like sports science. I think you could potentially have where like, you have a trade of an SNC coach and there's like a trade pathway or it's like the sports science pathway of like more academic people become research who become like sports scientists, especially I think some of that pressure could come from the fact that there are like now there's, now there's, now there's going to be sports science certifications, which to me, whatever, don't make much sense, but. Well, it's no, it's, it's funny you bring that up because you and me have talked about this before. Like I've been whatever, because of jobs is just how my career's worked out. I've been trying to finish my master's since shit, since I was still playing. And I went through, like, at least started and attempted to finish it, like, several different schools, like, for free, whatever. Finally, I started an online deal. And, uh, like, mine is in, like, sports performance rehabilitation and, like, sports analytics or some random thing. Basically, it's a, it's a master's in ex -phys. And I'm on the phone with, like, my, like, guidance counselor or whatever, or, like, one of my professors the other day. And I was like, look, like, I'm, like, I'm doing this, like, not even because, like, I need the education, but to check a box when I want to potentially move into a higher role later in my career so i can say i have a master's if i want to go for my phd like i'm just doing this to check a box like all the stuff you guys are advertising i'm going to be able to do after this degree i've already been doing it I've, i'm already 
of the rehab coordinator return to play guy. Like I already do like yeah. data, did like you, sports did you science, force play, the whatever. When you flopped your cock on it? <laughs> you, you know what? I, I think there was like a like a small like cricket like chirp from where you just heard like you a small creak. Right now. Huh. Like it was just like and like and it, was, and it was like for example like I was like the, like it was I was talking tissues of well you need thirty hours like every week to be able to like successfully move through this program. I was just like flat out told it's like all right then I'm not gonna do it like I don't have thirty hours to give you every week I'm gonna log on do my work log off turn it in that's gonna be the end of it like. Like, I, like again, that's kind of like she got kind of pissy with me because I'm just nodding your Don't give yourself away, bro. Yeah, so oh, I got an uh, email in December saying, "Am I still on the course?" <laughs> so, For real. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, it's just, uh, so it's just, uh, so it's just like, and like, and like that's like that's like the bigger problem is even like when you look at like the under like the undergraduate level, like the education, like that. And then this is the education system as a whole. Like, there's no like critical problem solving or thinking like in the actual education it's just so and i'm frozen or yeah i'm not frozen uh good lord <laughs> but even but even then like there's no like it's just okay what do i what do i need to do to get a passing grade or what do i need to do to move on to the next class or there's no like actual like ability to like want to like want to learn or like thirst for like actual like want to improve it's just trying to ch continually check a box and that's high school, that's university, that's like postgraduate. That's, that's an, and I just bring that to my own person. But the reality, the bigger problem is that's education as a whole, at least in America. Like it's just continually trying to check a box, whether it's for state testing, state funding, whatever, so be it, so forth. Like that's just, that's the bigger problem and bigger issue as a whole. So there's some, there's some like high level colleges. Like I know Cornell offers this, like they're offering like certificate courses and they're like, a thousand dollars, something like that. And like our assistant sports scientist at the Astros took a machine learning course as um basically as like an off season activity. <laughs> like you already knew how to code with a machine learning course. And I asked them like uh well, do you think that machine learning course would be worth is worth more than like he has a bachelor's and a master's. He's like, my bachelor's and a master's would mean nothing compared to this machine learning course from Cornell. And it was took I think it was like two, two, three months, maybe cost like two grand or something like that. He said but, but it was a, that was that's what got him. That helped him get like a high, a high argue for a higher pay raise when he became assistant sports scientist. And I like, mean, like two grand. eventually, eventually he'll be like ahead of R and D purely because of that machine learning co like course from Cornell that took him two months. Two two grand. That's four times the cost of Strength Coach Network fundamentals. <laughs> Think about that. And also, yeah. by team builder. <laughs> <laughs> 